Welcome to another quality production from Vedui Gaming! No, I'm just kidding, that sounds so lame. This time I'm going to go through how to install the GNA mod horde mode because I was showing a couple of videos uh, previously, well lately, and uh, you might be interested in how you actually play it yourself and how do you get it installed, where do you get it, how does it work? So I'm going to go through this, so just hold on. And now a quick message from our advertisers. No, just kidding, don't tune out. But I wanted to express my gratitude for everyone's support and I invite you to subscribe to my channel as that really does help me grow. But also come engage on my Discord and follow my Twitter. I definitely follow back all gamers. Join my VEDAT community, links are up on the top right I think of my YouTube channel page. So installing GNA mod horde mode is actually pretty easy if you just have the mod launcher, the 7 days to die mod launcher by Sveri or Sveri2, uh, I'm actually not quite sure how it pronounces that. So let me walk you through it. First you go to the webpage that I'll leave a link below and here you have some information of how to install it, how to manage model it, blah blah blah, all this really good stuff that you can read through but the important thing is that you need to download it. So hit it, download it and install it. Second step, now that you have installed it, and that was fast right, you can actually install pretty much any modlet pack here that you want or mod pack, but we're going to do the GNM mod and we we'll go down here and there's a few different ones that you can do. I'm going to take the GNA mod horde mode and the stable ones, of course you can try different ones, and here is where you copy from existing copies. So if you don't have the game, make sure you download it first or you could download it from Steam but then you have to provide your username and password and I don't like to do that because not that I distrust him but I don't like to give away my Steam credentials to third party software at all. So download it through Steam and it will then copy it if it's in a different location you can just pick the folder and install it and of course this is where it will install it and install game copy. That will take a while because it will copy over the whole game which is about 8 gigabyte. So just hold on a little bit while that gets done. Right after it's actually copied over the base game, it might say mod folder detected. And this is if your usual install that you had actually had a mod folder. And if that's the case, you have to or you should press yes because it will basically delay, delete the whole folder and install the correct mods. Otherwise, you might end up with some conflicts where previously installed mods interfere with the GNA mod horde mode. So we're going to do yes and done. So now is it done? No, no, no. It's just partially done. You also have to pre-sync mod and pre-sync mod is actually where it downloads the, the mod itself. So what we've only done is copied over the base game and we have to do this as well. And it's a little bit weird. It shouldn't say pre-sync mod. I think it should say, I don't know, install mod or something because what I've done in the past and you might do is that you start playing the mod, you hit play mod and it will come up and some things will look like maybe it's the mod itself but it's not properly installed so nothing is going to work properly. So you want to make sure you pre-sync the mod and that's going to take a while because it's downloading as you can see all the stuff from wherever it's being hosted. And we're done and actually now you are done. This is it. That's all to install it. And now let's get into playing it and how to create a world. We start the game and it will start loading in and it might take slightly longer than vanilla because there are some extra things that it has to load that the vanilla game doesn't have. And as you can see, it looks very different. You see GNM mod, odd mode. So we're going to do a new game and we're going to do a GNA test. And you should not choose Navis game. You should go to forward, forward, forward. And there's basically odd mode hill, odd mode crater and... I think that's it and as you can see they're quite small because you basically just you know you're in the middle of a small small map and you're trying to defend so it doesn't have to generate the whole big thing you can change these ones which is the cycle the daylight length and everything you probably want to make sure you change the blood wound frequency and probably bring it make sure it's the standard seven you can do it every day if you want to but that'll probably be fairly tough because it well then you have blood blood wound every night so we're going to do usual 100% and I think that's fine. We're going to bring these ones to the regular ones. 100, we respond. I don't think this one really matters because there's hardly any loot. The blood moon count because this one will affect the blood moon horde, not the normal waves. So if you make it to the first blood moon, assuming it's seven days, I have my hats off to you because it's not easy. And multiplayer, if you're going to do with friends you might want to change that but for now I'm just gonna start it. 
and everything spawns in hopefully and if you see the beacon it'll tell you some basic stuff here which is just the general things and this is if you don't see this properly meaning that maybe you're in a no man's place and there's no ground and everything it probably means that you did not pre-sync the mod because that's what i have done in the past you will see well there's a quest and everything but it's the usual thing you'll see a slightly different ui you have the the toolbar or the toolbar here um or the hot bar which is this top row let's see if i put it in here you'll see it show up which is a little bit weird you do have the inventory here which is larger which is good and all the crafting here so it's been done slightly differently i i got a little bit confused of it myself when i first got it but uh, that's all there is to it and of course this is what you have to defend and there are a few things here uh there's the beacon storage which is your things that you can just grab you'll see there's a bunch of them on each side here which is can be quite useful there's a lot of duplicates to use as you can see and this is the storage on each side there'll also be a, be a disposal unit so if i drop it here oh sorry nope so if you just sell it you'll get some money and well you can buy it back can you buy it back oh you can buy it back you get some money of it if things you don't want you have your weapon cache and this is where you buy things and this you have to go to secret stash which is where all the stuff is buy all the weapons you have the building cache again secret stash where you can buy all this building stuff concrete is really good <laughs> make sure you get that and well actually concrete and the iron frame or rebars and you have the supplies cache which is basically food and bandages and some ammo and weapons and everything just random things and it's on each side so uh, just store your things inside this one buy here and then defend and if this one blows up well that's when you have a big boom and i shall see if i can show that and this might start lagging once this blows up yep you see everything blows up and it starts lagging a bit because it's a lot of explosions boom and that's what happens when the zombies destroy it so don't let that happen good luck try it out too much explosions anyway see you next time special thanks to the great patrons supporting the channel if you would like to join the vetted community and support these videos do follow the patreon link